everyone, welcome to my Big Finish Collection update for 2020! I, uh, I was busy, and now I'm suddenly not. <laughs> Lockdown. Uh, but, yeah, uh, as you could see from that little teaser, I have a lot now. Uh, there's t t too much, quite frankly. Um, it's a lot more than I did last time. I did one of these updates, so I might as well get started. I'm just gonna mention which stories I have. A any updates on, like, anything I've listened to, as in, like, any opinions I have on them. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do it. So, we've, we've got, uh, we've of course got the Sirens of Time first. Whispers of Terror, uh, I've got a case for it because I got, um, TV cases, but it's still, you know, not ideal. <laughs> Land of the Dead, release number four. Um, I do want the Fearmonger, though, um, which is the one that's next. But I've got a seventh Doctor story: the Genocide Machine. Want to flee that? The Holy Terror, because you know I'm a madman. I have all the Rob Shearman uh, stuff on CD now, which is great. Mutant Face, Sword of Orion. Minuet in Hell, which still only has one disc. Lugaroo, I've still not listened to that in full. Dust Breeding, it's a great story. Uh, underrated, I would say. Speaking of underrated, Blood Tide, not enough people speak about this one. The Eye of the Scorpion, RMM's first audio, and quite frankly, this is the Fifth Doctor Perry and RMM stuff I love. They're, it's like some of my favourite stuff. Primeval, uh, what the Keeper of Trockets should have been. The Chimes of Midnight, uh, probably my favourite. I say probably, there's there's a contender. Oh, I'm already worn out! <laughs> I need to work out. Um, Seasons of Fear, probably my second... Well, no, it's not my second favourite, Eighth Doctor Monthly, it's probably my third favourite. Time of the Daleks, uh, probably one of my least favourite Eighth Doctor Monthlies. Neverland, the people to Sagreus, I need to listen to this one again. The Maltese Penguin, it's a bonus release, but I have it here, because why not? Spare Apart, because I am mad. And yeah, I, I have it, and I got it for like £15, so that's a good that's a good price. The Church and the Crown, pretty good, pure historical. Uh, bang Bang A Boom. Oh, oh Bang Bang A Boom. <laughs> Sorry, just, I just realised uh, my hand is immediately going out, so yeah, Church and the Crown. And Bang Bang A Boom. Uh, Doctor Who does Star Trek and Eurovision at the same time. Uh, it's underrated, I would say. Jubilee, probably my favorite. Well, I don't know if it's my favorite big finished Dalek story anymore, but it's certainly my favorite uh, monthly range Dalek story. Uh, my heart. <laughs> the Dark Flame. Uh, yeah, it's alright. Creatures of Beauty, actually really good. Probably my favorite fifth Doctor in this adventure. Oh, there's so much dust. Flip flop, you can listen to it in either order and it still makes sense. Omega, I need to listen to this one again, I might appreciate it more now. Uh, Master, the best big finish Master story without question. Zagreus, the 40th anniversary release and the 50th release in the monthly range. And it's mad and four hours long and I love it, but I only listen to it once because it's four hours long. And then The Wormery, the first big finish audio to feature Iris well time and it's great. I'm gonna Take a break from my arms. <laughs> Alright, next up we have Shirtzo, which is probably my second favourite eighth Doctor Monthly. Uh, the Creed of the Cromen. A uh, contender for one of the worst eighth Doctor Monthlies, but I, I think it's alright, but Philip Martin's just a good writer in general. Natural History of Fear. Bonkers. Uh, Twilight Kingdom, not bonkers enough. Axis of Insanity. Bonkers. <laughs> Arrangements for War. Good character piece, but it's not really... It's not really a, a story that gives you oomph. The Harvest, probably should listen to it again. The Roof of the World, underwhelming. Medicinal Purposes, uh, it had potential and then it ruined itself. Faith Sealer, pretty good. The Last, really depressing. Kerdroya, one of my favourite Eighth Doctors. Uh, uh, the Next Life, finale to Divergent Universe arc, and it's great because it has Pulled Arrow in it. Um, the Juggernauts, a very good story, uh, Davros making the Mechanoids, 
the game. Ooh, it's this one's a six par, and it's actually pretty good, I think, um, because yeah, also good performance by William Russell. Dream time. Uh, Catch seventeen eighty two, pretty good, I would say. Three's a crowd. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's interesting. Uh, unregenerate, underwhelming. Council of Nicaea, probably. Yeah, I I love this one very much. Uh, Terra Firma, pretty good Dalek story. Um, the thicker than water, good sequel to arrangements for war. Live thirty four. Ooh, it's a good one. I need to listen to it again. Scaredy Cat. Eh, it's alright. Singularity. Eh. Other Lives. Very good peer historical. Peer pressure. No. No. <laughs> Night Thoughts. One of my favourite big finish audios ever. And I got it signed by Sophie Aldred. Uh, Time Works. Very good story. The Kingmaker. Utterly brilliant. Right, time for the next row. The settling. Oh, that's depressing. Why did you have to put, like, a hex through that? And all the other characters as well. Uh, something inside. I thought it was alright, you know. The Nowhere Place. I heard great things about this one, but... Uh, I, I think it's overrated, but... I still like it, you know. I can see why people do like it. Red, again, a bit overrated, but I can see why people like it too. The Reaping. Fantastic. It's it's great for it makes the sixth Doctor and Perry's dynamic in season twenty-two. It does that, but good. Um The Gathering. Oh, it feel it feel, this feels like the natural end point of Tegan. Uh, and you'll know why if you listen to it. Memory Lane. Oh, it's it's so weird and trippy and I love it. No Man's Land. Ooh, surprise villain. I, I I think it's good, yeah. I mean it's set. It's, I mean it's the seventh Doctor and Ace, Ace and Hex, so I I immediately love it. Um, Year of the Pig is quite interesting and features Michael Keating, Villa from Blake Seven. Yeah, Circular Time. Uh, winter is the best one, followed by Summer. Uh, Autumn and Spring are right as well. Renaissance of the Daleks. I kind of stopped listening to it after part three and. Just because, you know, it was inconvenient to listen to the fourth part, and I've not revisited it since, because I don't care. Exatron. It, it's alright. And the urban myths, I I do prefer. Ooh, Valhalla's great, with, like, Sylvester McCoy and Michelle Gomez. They've got great chemistry, and I wish Michelle Gomez's character became companion. The Wishing Beast and the Vanity Box. Ooh, great story, and Jean Marsh is really good in The Wishing Beast. I love her. Um, Frozen Time. A good Ice Warriors story, I would say, yeah. Also, yeah, surprise, Ice Warriors. It's almost as if it's like Nick Briggs knew that, okay, he realized people noticed that he was just adapting some of his old audio visuals, so instead of having the Silurians, he was like, ha, Ice Warriors, I fooled you. Uh, Son of the Dragon. Basically, it's got the same ending as Council of Nicaea, but I think the story... It's much more engaging as a story, but I prefer the historical So I prefer it when Aramem was actually trying to influence history in Council of Nicaea, but she's still... It's still an interesting character piece on Aramem and Dracula in Son of the Dragon, so yeah. A hundred, it's, uh, it's an underwhelming anthology, but it is worth the price tag alone for Rob Shearman's story. My own private Wolfgang. Uh, Absolution, I've not listened to it yet. I've probably not listened to most of these, so I'll just do a quick fire. The Mind's Eye, Girl Never Was, The Bride of Paladin, The Condemned, The Company of Friends, I've only listened to Mary's story, A Thousand Tiny Wings, great story to reintroduce Klein, Survival of the Fittest, uh, starts out with Klein's story, and it's great, and then Survival of the Fittest is also a good story. Um, the Architects of History is just, uh, what if the Fourth Reich happened and it was time travel? Ooh, it, it's, it's, it's great. Um, A Death in the Family, not listen to that. Works at Sun White's Edge. Uh, Demon's Red Lodge and Other Stories. Uh, the Crimes of Thomas Brewster. 
Beast of Access. Well, I have actually listened to the Carnage Thomas Brewster because it was on BBC Radio 4 Extra, and yeah, it's good. Uh, it introduces Flip as well. So, Injustice Revolution, Heroes of Santa, Kiss of Death, Rat Trap, which I'm very looking forward to, Robophobia introduces Liz, uh, Recorded Time and Other Stories, The Doomsday Quatrain, House of Blue Fire, the Silver Turk! I'm sorry you're not canon anymore, but you're still really good. Which from the well, just as good. Army of Death, it was nearly a perfect trilogy, and then this had to come in and ruin it. Black and White, not so long as that. We are the Daleks, very good Dalek story, and quite frankly, it showcases what Mel should have been like. You are the Doctor and other stories. Pretty good anthology. Probably should listen to it again. I've listened to it twice, actually. Um. Warriors of Amsterdam, not listen to that. Actain. Peter Lou Massacre, which I'm very looking forward to listening. Andy Will Obey Me. Eh. Vampire of the Mind, good story. Two Masters. Worth it for the for this main selling point, but as a story, it's a bit meh. Uh, Shadow Planet and World Apart, very good. My first introduction to Hex. The Middle, not listened to, and Static, not listened to. So that's my monthly range audios. I've got quite a lot now, but I've still only got about half of them. So, uh, yeah. Um, on to the bonus releases. I own five of them. Real Time, very good Cyberman story. Sharda, good, but I prefer the Tom Baker version. Return of the Daleks, tie into the Dark Empire audios, and I think it's actually very good, and it is, it is a sequel to a certain 70s Dalek story. An Earthly Child, very good. It's, I, I would really recommend it uh, to anyone. But if you're planning to listen to Louis Miller audios, I think this is a, this is a must. The Four Doctors, which very isn't a must. I actually got a subscription just to get this. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I own it. It's a nice brag, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, on to the next row. Light at the end, their 50th anniversary story. It's you know, it's it's alright. I think if this is a good introductory story to Big Finish, I think. Then Unbound, Old Mortal uh, Old Mortality. I'm Scottish, I should pronounce it right. Ugh. Um, but yeah, it's what if the Doctor never left Gallifrey and it's good. Sympathy for the Devil, this one's very popular. I think it's slightly overrated, but David Warner's Doctor Very isn't. Uh Full Fathom Five, personally my favourite Unbound audio, I would say. Uh what if the Doctor believe the ends justify the means? He just that scars, which I think is underrated, actually. Deadline. Oh my gosh, as a writer, it really hits hard. Uh, Exile. Uh, Storm of Angels. Good sequel to Old Mortality, but I would have preferred... Like, Old Mortality's ending works better if it didn't have a sequel, but Masses of War, I think, is a sequel that's well-deserved. Um, yeah, and plus, the Doctor and Davros work together because they... This is still technically the first time they ever met, so... Yeah, and they met in different circumstances, and that's quite interesting. So now, 8th Doctor and Lucy Miller audios. Blood of the Daleks, part 1, and part 2. Oh, shit, I dropped... <laughs> that is not damaged. Blood of the Daleks, good story. Um, I have all the Lucy Miller audios, by the way. Um, Horror Glam Rock. Uh, there's one line that's extremely bad, but apart from that, it's fine. Uh, Immortal Beloved. Uh, series 1 of Lucy Miller, it has three great stories and three, uh, and Immortal Beloved, uh, Phobos, and No More Lies. Uh, although No More Lies I do like, but I don't love. I would give it like a 6 or 7 out of 10, probably. But then Human Resources Part 1 and Part 2, this is probably the objective best one for the season. Then Dead London, it's alright, yeah, I like it. Max Warp, very funny. Um, got Brain Garden in it. And he's great in it, as he always is in these. Uh, Brave New Town. Oh, it's very good. Um, unlike Skull of Skobek, it's not good. Grand Theft Cosmos, I like, okay. Uh, Zygon New Pal to Earth is probably the best one. It's, and it's got the guy that plays Del Tarrant in Blake 7. As you can tell, I like Blake 7. Where was I? Oh, yes. Sisters of the Flame, great. Alexander Stig, like fucking Bashir from Star Trek. And then Vengeance of Morbius, uh, it's disappointing. I wasn't really a fan of Brain of Morbius to begin with, but, like, the sequel story is alright. Orbis is interesting. Um, 
I would only really listen to it if I was doing a marathon though. Hot House, very good, very topical as well nowadays. Beast of Warlock, it's fun. Uh, I think it's got Samuel Barnett in it. Yes, it does. We're in Dawn, We've got probably my favorite cast out of any series three story of Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller, and it's very good. Scapego has Samantha Bond in it, and I like her in it, but it's just like series three when the stories aren't as good. It's got more not as good stories in there than there. Series two, I think, is on average stronger, but when series three hits, it hits hard. Speaking of, eh, the cannibalists. This one is just by definition filler. Uh, the Eight Truths and World Wide Web. I love it. It's actually... I would say it's my favourite finale, but it's technically my second least favourite, simply because um, the human resources in Lucy Miller to the Death are just better. Um, Death in Blackpool. Actually heartbreaking. And then you've got Situation Vacant. Which very isn't, and it's... Yeah, I would say it's very good, and... Yeah, like, it's pretty fun. It's a funky concept as well. Nevermore, I would like, but Tamsin is really annoying. Book of Kells, um, doesn't have that issue. Uh, even though Tamsin is still annoying, it's still an interesting... It's just a more interesting story in its own right. Because I love the meddling monk. Uh, Demos and the Resurrection of Mars, one of my favourite stories in the entire Lucy Miller range. Um, it's just so... <laughs> It's just like, we're not afraid to do anything at this point, and that's what I love about Series 4. Um, and then, Relative Dimensions, it's a fun Christmas story, as opposed to, that is not fun. Uh, Prisoner of the Sun, again, it's filler, but it's actually a better story. And then Lucy Miller and To the Death, uh, again, it rivals Chimes of Midnight for like the best big finish story, and it's just like, ah, I love it. It's so good. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> and then you've got uh, Pub Adventures of Lucy Miller, which has Dalek Trap Revolution Game House on the Edge of Chaos and Island of the Fendal. Island of the Fendal is probably my favourite, and then Revolution Game is probably my second favourite. Uh, then we've got the Dark Eye Saga. I've got all of Dark Eyes and Doom Coalition, so yeah. The Great War, good introduction. Fugitives, good continuation. Tang Tangled Web, probably the most interesting one in that. And then X and the Daleks. It's a finale. And then Dark Eyes 2, which people say is better, and I can see why. The Traitor. Good reintroduction of Liv. The White Room. Interesting, I would say. Nice to bring back the Virons. Um, and Time's Horizon. You know, it's a good aesthetic, I think. And Eyes of the Master. Reintroducing Alex McQueen as the Master, who I love. Um, and then Dark Eyes 3, Death of Hope. Reviled. Master plan and uh, rule of the eminence. I just wish Narvin was in it more. Not gonna lie, I love Narvin. He's like one of my favorite characters. Um, then you've got Life in the Day. You know, very good. It's like your standard John Dorney. Very good story. Uh, Monster of Montmartre. It's just all right. Reintroduction of the Daleks into Dark Eyes. The Master of the Daleks. Don't really remember this one other than the Masters in it. And then to finish off, we've got Eye of Darkness. Dark Eyes, Eye of Darkness. It's a finale. I, I liked it when I first listened to it, but then when I re-listened to it, I don't dislike it. It's a finale. It does its job, which is better than what I can say for the Battle of Anscore have Kolos. That's, that's for sure. And then Doom Coalition. I need to re-listen to this. I probably said this last time, but I need to re-listen to it. Um, so we've got the Eleven, an introduction to one of the most creative Big Finish villains ever. Uh, the Red Lady, pretty unique. I'm disappointed that that got an explanation later on, because it didn't need it. Galileo Trap, eh. I don't think the- I, I think the only Mark Platt Eighth Doctor script that I actually like is Silver Turk at this point. Uh, Galileo Trap. Satanic Commit, it's a finale to this box set, but it's not very good. <laughs> I don't like it. It's probably my least favorite Eighth Doctor finale. Um, Beachhead. Oh look, the Vorder in it. <laughs> Scenes from her life. Eh. John Dorney uh, tried. I will give him that. The gift. 
Mike Platt did an alright job. The Sonomancer. Uh, River Song's in it. I don't like Doom Coalition 2. From memory. I need to re-listen to it again. Maybe I might enjoy it more on a re-listen. Uh, but uh, Doom Coalition 3. Good. Absent Friends. Very good. Probably the best Doom Coalition episode. Uh, Eighth Piece and Doomsday Chronometer. Very good. By the way, I like River Song in Doom Coalition 3. I'm not saying, oh look, River Song's in it as a bad thing. I'm saying that, you know, the the selling point is that, and that's it, you know, for Sonomancer. And then you've got The Crucible of Souls, probably the best box set finale since X and the Daleks, you know? And then you've got um, Chip in a Bottle, you know, alright. Uh, no, actually, no, it's, it is good, but it, you know, I feel like it should have had, like, a break in the middle. Like, you know, it should have been, like, a two-parter, 30-minute episode. Because, you know, you, you need you need a break, you know. When you listen to audio, you know. I can listen to, like, an hour at a time, but, like, possibly more if I'm on a, on a long journey. But, like, you need a break, like, in, in the middle. Like, 30 minutes, and then you just have a breather, listen to the Doctor Who theme, yeah. Songs of Love. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Rare Song's exit from the saga, Doctor Light, it's alright. Side of the Angels, the monk comes back, it and the Weeping Angels are in it, and Olystra's in it, and yeah. Oh, Jacqueline Pierce, I love her. <laughs> I have a rest in peace. Um, Stop the Clock it is a finale. And then you've got Ravenous, which. Even though Doom Coalition 2 is probably objectively the worst 8th Doctor box set, to me, Ravenous 1, it's, it made me stop collecting the 8th Doctor box sets, apart from the Lucy Miller one and the Time War stuff. Because Ravenous just doesn't interest me, and also, the more I think about it, the more it angers me. So you start out with a Churchill episode, this will be important later. Uh, it's an alright episode, it's probably my favourite of the box set, not gonna lie. How to make a killing in time travel, what the fuck is this? It's just a script that exists, and it's just like, it doesn't know what it wants to do, and it's just frantic, and maybe that's the point, but I don't like that. Then you've got the two-parter, uh, World of Damnation and Sweet Salvation, which has the return of the Candyman. I love the Candyman, I love the Happiness Patrol, but the reason why the Happiness Patrol works is because it is an FU to authority figures, you know, like Thatcher, like Churchill! I'm a Seventh Doctor fan, okay? Okay? This is why I get angry, this is why I get a bit heated. Let's move on to the Companion Chronicles before I punch something. Um, Fear of the Daleks. Uh, it's alright, yeah. The Bluetooth. I just love the Liz ones. She's great. Caroline John is great. But it's, an in it's interesting because it's a four part. Home Truths. Uh, it's a bit overrated, but I do like the Sarah Kingdom trilogy. But I just prefer the other two. You know, as actual stories. But I love the framework of them. Um, it's, it's interesting. Transit of Venus. I love the Ian ones as well. I just love the first Doctor ones. Okay. Um, Prisoner's Dilemma, I've not listened to. I want the, I got this because I want a bet. Um, with Jean-Luc. Mahogany Murderers, great start. Great pilot to Jago and Lightfoot. I, I love it. Drowned World, as I say, Sarah Kingdom, good. Glorious Revolution, probably the only second Doctor Big Finish I actually like. Because it's good, because it's like, Jamie... Jamie's like, oh, I, like, like they, they meet King James the Seventh of Scotland, uh, and he abdicated the throne of Scotland and England. Jamie wants to change history because the reason why he met the Doctor was at the Battle of Colin, uh, Culloden. Sorry, I, I can't words at the moment, and it's just like the re the reason Jamie was fighting because he thought that the Stuart dynasty was the correct dynasty. And it was, you know, yeah. Uh, he was fighting for Pony Prince Charlie. Prisoner of Peladon. I'm only going to listen to this once I've actually watched the Peladon stories. Um, the Suffering, Great Suffragettes episode. 
Solitaire, good sequel to the Cecil Toymaker, and it's nice to listen to Charlie again. I, I like Charlie. She's not my favourite Eighth Doctor companion, because, you know, she's not Lucy, but I like Charlie a lot. Um, Guardian of the Solar System, I do like. It's nice to explore Sarah Kingdom as a character, and it's just sad because she meets Brett again, and yeah. Preparing the Fisk on Paradox is also sad because of Perry's story. Uh, then we get to the Perpetual Bond. You know, I, it's, a nice, it's a nice start to this trilogy. I, I do like it. Um, the Cold Equations, which is sad because of Oliver's secret. <laughs> Why do I like sad things? <laughs> then you've got the specials box set, where you've got uh, the three companions, Polly Story. Which, you know, that's that's good. I prefer the Brigadier's story. Uh, but Brewster's story is also alright. Yeah, Brewster's an alright character. Now you've got the Mists of Time. You know, pretty good. I do like it. I do like Katie Manning's stuff. Uh, Freakshire. Uh, probably my favourite one of the set. Uh, but it's, it's an alright set. Uh, but you're not missing out on much if you don't, you know. The only thing you're really missing out on is, like, Nicholas Courtney's, like, probably final performance as the Brigadier. But yeah, the first wave, nice, I just love, it's a, it's a beautiful conclusion to the Oliver Harper trilogy. The only Ultimate Adventure, I've not listened to that. I have listened to the Ultimate Adventure, but we'll get to that. Um, Binary! I've not listened to this yet, and I want to, but the last post, it's so good! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, James Goss, I love you. <laughs> if he watches this... Oh, I'm gonna be embarrassed because I might be interviewing him soon. Speaking of James Goss, the Scorchies. It's a really good one. Mastermind. I should have got this signed by Jeffrey Beavers when I had the chance. But I didn't, you know? It's good, like, the Master becomes the head of the Mafia. And it's great. Did I... No, I didn't swap the covers. Uh, War Tender Wars, I've not listened to that yet. I'm only really gonna listen to that once I get the first Doctor Companion Chronicles Volume 1 box set, but I don't know when I'm gonna do that. I just know that's my plan. The Elixir of Doom, which I got signed by Katie Manning, um, because, you know, I love her as Iris, I love her as Joe, and this is where they interact, and I love that, and yeah. So then there's the first Doctor Companion Chronicles Volume 2 box set, uh, with Fields of Terror, Across the Darkened City, Bonfires of the Vanities, and Plague of Dreams. I think I've speak spoken about this before. And the second Doctor Companion Chronicles Volume 2 with. Uh, Curator's Egg, Dumbwaiter, Iron Maiden, Taxes of Defeat. I believe I've... Sp have I spoken about this before? I think I have. Yeah, I have. I have. Must have. The Ultimate Adventure. It's good. It's fun. Okay. It, it's just a nice fun story. 17th Doomsday is good. Uh, Curse of the Daleks. It's good if you ignore all the datedness about it. Because it's a faithful adaptation and it, and it was originally written in... Six Anyway, Throw from the Future, part one, well, parts one and two, three and four, five and six. It's a good story. Um, if, if Danny Welch is watching, uh, I don't get why this is your favourite, but I'm not going to invalidate your opinion because I do like it too. I'm sitting on my bed now just so we can get a closer look. The Valley of Death, parts one and two, three and four. I do like it. It's it's probably my favourite one of the fourth Doctor Lost Stories box set. Um, because it's just quite interesting. Every episode is set somewhere different and oh I like I, I, I love the keys of Marinus and the Chase, so it it does feel like a Terry Nation script in a way. The Elite, my favourite Lost Story thus far, I've not listened to many. Um I I do want to listen to the Sixth Doctor, like season twenty three Lost Stories, like uh, Nightmare Fair, Ultimate Evil uh, Hollows of Time, the other one, yeah, Mission to Magnus, <laughs> I, what, did I forget that one? It's Philip Martin, and, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, Short Trips Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, I do like them all, but I won't get into them for time reasons. Uh, the Toy, not listened to that yet. And now, the 4th Doctor Adventures Series 2, with the Arty Matter. Oh, the Auntie Matt is very good. Julia McKenzie's great in it, as she always is when she does a big finish. Um, Sounds of Life and War Against the Lawn. It's very good. It's 
It's a good five episodes, and, you know, just David Warner. David Warner. Also, Mary Tamas Romana, she's fabulous as always. Um, uh, the Justice of Jalxar, <laughs> my boys, Jago and Light for meeting Romana, I love it! Um, like, my, my favourite side characters in Doctor Who, well, two of my favourite side characters meeting one of my favourite companions, just, I love. Phantoms of the Deep, you know, it's just a, it's a decent story. It's probably the weakest one of this season, but, like, it's still really good. Um, Dalek Contract, Final Phase, put David Warner with Dalek so you get a good combination. And then you've got Series 8, which isn't as good as Series 2, but uh, it's st I still like it. It's just Tom Baker. It's an Astrum kill. Very good. Um, Andrew Smith's a good writer. Um, I will point out whenever Andrew Smith comes up if I in my recollection, because he is a good writer. I do like myself some Andrew Smith. Uh, Planet of the Drashigs. I just, I just love the Drashigs, okay? Uh, Enchantress of Numbers. Ada Lovelace. You know, it's a good story with Ada Lovelace in it. The False Guardian and Time's Assassin makes sense. Someone that pretend is pretending to be Mavic Chan, you know. Like, the stuff that actually does have fan service to uh, Dalek's Master Plan is good, but, like, still, Dalek's Master Plan is missing, so I still find it hard to, like, visualize which characters are which. They are still iconic looking characters, though. But this one has Zephon, I think? Oh, no. I think it's Zephon. Um, but yeah, Fever Island, oh, this one's probably my favourite of the season, because it's, you know, it's the most different. And then Perfect Prisoners, Parts 1 and 2, Parts 3 and 4, eh, it's good, I like it, but it's, mm, yeah. Novel adaptations now, and I love all of the ones I own on CD. I have listened to The English Way of Death, I don't really like it, so Love and War, ooh, it's great, ooh. Well managed war. Ooh, it is great. Ooh, damaged goods is probably my favourite one. Russell T. Davies is a great writer, okay? I love his work. And Damaged Goods is one of his greatest things he's ever written. Um Theatre of War is a disappointing, yeah, all well, consuming fire is probably my least favourite one. But Nightshade is very good. It's like Mark Gatiss actually doing something good. Like, we all know he's talented, but his Doc 2 work is not that like, great, but Nightshade is probably the best Mark Gatiss script there is. Um, Original Sin, good introduction to Chris and Rons. And Cold Fusion. Um, which works a lot better now that Timeless Children happened. I need to listen to it again, but it's a six par. Three hours, that's that's a big commitment. Domain of the Vord, we're in the early adventures now. And Andrew Smith, again, he's good. I think Andrew Smith... When he's doing something connected with Terry Nation stuff, he's probably like the go-to guy. I would I would say, um, because he's done a lot of Terry Nation sequels, and in fact he's done a Blake Seven, and he was, his his Blake Seven episode on Big Finish is really good, I think. Uh, but we'll get to that. I don't think it's on CD. No, I think it's out of print. But like, yeah, so I probably won't talk about it here. The Doctor's Tale. Um, I like it, but it's a bit too long for my liking. Each episode is about 35 minutes long, and it's just... Mark Platt, I love ya, but it's a bit long. Bounty of Sarah, or Bounty of Series, sorry, is probably my least favourite, but it's still good, it's still interesting. And then An Ordinary Life is probably my second favourite after Domain of the Ward, because it's just, I love a historical, okay? And Steven and Sarah are like my two favourite first Doctor companions, and just like... Ooh, it's really good. It, it's like, it's good at modernizing 62, I think. So, you've got a good season with the first Doctor, but then the second Doctor... Second Doctor and Big Finish doesn't really work, in my opinion. But it's because I don't think his stories are too interesting, and... If, if it were Troughton, specifically, it would be improved. And although Fraser Hines does do great a great Troughton impression, in fact, he's probably my favorite Troughton impersonist out there, because he sounds exactly like Troughton. He's not Troughton, if that makes sense. Second Doctor stories only really work with Troughton. Which should be why the Companion Chronicles should work, but like the only one I've listened to that is actually that great is The Glorious Revolution. So, uh, so you've got the Yes Men, 
It's alright. The Forsaken, it's pretty decent. The Black Hole, I do like it. The ISOS Network, go away. You know, it's not, um, you know. I don't know if I've talked talk about them before, though. Then you've got Psychodrome Part 1 and 2, and then Part 3 and 4. It's great. It's what Castro Valva should have been, in my opinion. And then Iterations of My! Oh, shit. Iterations of I! Parts 1 and 2, Parts 3 and 4. When your favorite- my favorite number, right, is the villain of the story, as in the number itself. Yeah, I am a mass person, therefore it is God, okay? It is a God-tier story. So, then you've got Philip Hinchcliffe Presents Volume 1, I've only got Volume 1. Uh, Ghost of Growl said Part 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then 5 and 6. It's a good story, I, but I think I prefer it to Foth in the future, uh, because I, yeah, I think it does actually do, yeah, it does more, and I prefer, like, Hinchcliffe when he's a bit gothic, so hence why The Devil's Armada, part one and two, and then, and, and then parts three and four is also good. It's like, there's, an, there's more witch trial stuff in this, but like, as, a, as witch trial episodes go, I think The Witch from the Well is probably my favourite. So then you've got the third Doctor Adventures Volume 4, it's the only third Doctor Adventures I own. The Rise of New Humans is alright, but it should have had the Master in it instead of the Monk. And then the Tyrants of Logic, zombie Cyberman story, pretty unique. So then we've got the 8th Doctor, The Time War, um, which is better than Ravenous, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> so good that I continued with it, uh, eventually. So Starship Atheseus, very good opener. It it's John Dorney. He's good. And then Echoes of War is probably my one of, if not my favorite Matt Fitton script. Although An Ordinary Life was also very good. The conscript, stereotypical war stuff. One Life is a finale, and it it's a nice character piece, but like it it didn't really do anything in regards to Bliss because she doesn't really feel worth it. But they made her a companion. Anyway, the Lords of Terror. What was this one about again? Oh yeah, Bliss's homeworld. Uh, it, 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 it tries to do something with Bliss, I've got to commend them for that. Planet of the Ogrons is the best 8th Doctor Time War story, because it's got the 12. She just arrives and is like, oh yeah, I'm the 12, by the way, and the Doctor's like, oh, Bliss, you, no. And then you've got Doctor Ogron, who's funny, and the Oversick. It's just got so many good things, and it's balanced very well. Guy Adams is probably one of my favorite Big Finish writers. Um, like, in terms of modern Big Finish, he is probably my favourite. I know I said that about John Dorney, but I feel like John Dorney, he's, um, doing too much. He's spreading his creativity a bit too thinly, but sometimes you do get great stuff from him. Guy Adams is, I am scared that he'll ha suffer the same fate, but, like, he's still very good, and I still love his stuff. In the Garden of Death, written by uh, Guy Adams, not so great. I give him so many compliments, and then he does that. <laughs> Then Jonah, not to be confused with Torch with Jonah, uh, by Timothy X. It makes me interested in the wreck of the world now from the early adventures. But yeah, I think it's pretty good. So then you've got State of Bliss. It is good. It does stuff with Bliss as a character. And it, and I, I think this is the first time I actually cared about Bliss. Even after um, Lords of Terror. Famished Lands. Good, good, you know, story. Fugitive in Time, probably my least favourite, but at least, you know, at least you've got a trans character front and centre on the cover, and that's great. Well, I don't think, I don't think Tamzan is a trans character, but, like, she's played by a trans actress, and, you know, she's great. I like Adele Anderson in this role. I want to see more of Adele Anderson, though, in this role, certainly. And then you've got The War of Valiard, which is probably my favourite in the set. It does very interesting things with the Valiard, and I love it. Seventh Doctor, The New Adventures, uh, with Trial of a Time Machine, Vanguard, The Jabari Countdown, and The Dread of Night. And I, you know, love it. Uh, I love this set. I want more of them, okay? Big finish. Do more of this, you know, do more Seven Chris and Roll stuff. I love them. So, then we've got the comic strip adaptations. You've got Doctor and the Iron Legion. Part 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, you know... 
I, I liked the Iron Maiden. It was good. But then Star Beast just is better. Star Beast Part 1, 2, 3, and 4. Like, beat the meep. And, like, uh, you've also got... Like, your Sharon's pretty good in this as well. I, I like her and I want to see more of her. And then you've got Doctor Who and the bonus features. Uh, then we've got spin-offs, Bernie Summerfield. Uh, oh no, it isn't. A good pantomime story. Uh, Beyond the Sun, I probably my least favourite. It's uh, the characters are just so annoying. Walking to Babylon, uh, very good. Berthelai, um, also you know quite an interesting story. Just War is probably my favourite of season one of Bernie Summerfield. And then uh, Dragon's Wrath isn't that interesting, but you know I think it's good. Now you've got Dalek Empire. I've got all of them. And they're all great. Uh, like Dalek Empire 1. So you've got uh, Invasion of Daleks, Human Factor, uh, Death of the Daleks, and Project Infinity. It's a sad little story, but then it ends on a cliffhanger. So then you've got Dalek War Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and Chapter 4. It's like Daleks fighting Daleks from another universe, and it's great. And it, fe it feels more like Blake 7, but it isn't. Like, it only feels more like Blake 7 because, like, Gareth Thomas's character, Gareth Thomas is the guy that played Blake in Blake 7, he takes on a role that is more like Blake. But yeah, uh, then you've got Dark Empire 3, which is probably my favourite because it bounces a bunch of different characters. It feels like, it genuinely feels like the Daleks are a big scope rather than a big threat, and I prefer Daleks having scope and being a big threat at the same time, which is what this season does so you've got the exterminators the healers the survivors the demons the warriors and the future then dalek empire 4 is probably my least favorite season but i do love noel clark's character so then like Cade, i think his name is so you've got the fearless part one fearless part two fearless part three and the fearless part four uh, yeah, then you've got Sarah Jane Smith series. I've listened to all of them. I've got all of them. <laughs> and then they re-released it. And I'm like, I spent a lot of money on my Sarah Jane Smith collection only for a list to happen. So then you've, so you've got Comeback. Uh, it's a bit long and uh, it's, it's a bit slow. And yeah, Tower Connection. It's alright, but then Test of Nerve. Oh, it's brilliant. It's so tense. Ghost Town, very spooky. Uh, Mirror Signal Maneuver, good finale. And then Season 2. Holy shit, Season 2 is just... Ooh, I mean, you've got Tom Chadbon, who played Doug in City of Death, and he plays Harry Sullivan's brother in this. Uh, Buried Secrets starts off the story arc very interestingly. Uh, Snowblind, you know, pretty interesting. Oh, Fatal Consequences, and then Dreamland. Ooh, that's a finale. And Dreamland is the reason why I don't think this is canon. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah Jane Smith fans, people who think it's canon. No. Uh, anyway, so Gallifrey, uh, Weapon of Choice... Square One, uh, the, in the Inquiry, A Blind Eye, Lies, um, Spirits, which is probably my favourite episode of Classic Gallifrey, um, Pandora, Imperiatrix, no, uh, no it's not Imperiatrix. Oh, it's Insurgency, then, Imperiatrix. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Uh, oop, no, put, putting it back in the wrong place. Nope. Uh, fractures. Warfare. Appropriation. Mind Bomb. Just trying to read the titles. And then, Panacea. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really like Season 3. So then you've got Gallifrey Time War, with Celestial Intervention, Soldier Obscura, The Devil You Know, and Desperate Measures. I've already talked about all of these, but uh, the other two Time War box sets are out. I haven't yet, so let's talk about them. Time War Volume 2. You've got Havoc, Partisans, Collateral, and Assassins. It's a great story. Uh, like, it's a great box set, and, uh, Terence Hardman's Rassalon delivers a great performance. Then you've got Time War 3, which has got the best cover in Big Finish history, I think. With Hostiles, um, 
trying to remember what that one's about. Like, Nevernor, I think, was the more urban one. Mother Tongue was is probably the Leela Time War story we all want. Um, or what that we didn't know we wanted. And then Unity, oh, that's a finale. I'm looking forward to the fourth one. And then the and then we got the unit series. I've not listened to this yet. Uh, Time Heals, Snakehead, Longest Night, and The Wasting. Uh, Nick is has done a video talking about these. Uh, unit Dominion, uh, which I really do like. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Oh look, what a familiar! Hmm, this guy looks familiar. Neil's dad from the Inbetweeners. Uh, then you've got uh, some Irish Wild Time, you've got uh, Wild Time at Large, and then uh, Halls of Santa. Those are the only ones I own on CD, I should own more. Halls of Santa's really good, I did talk about it recently on Universals, I say recently, it was December. Then you've got the Idavros series, Innocence, Purity, Corruption, Guilt. It's a great mini series, worth every penny. And then we've got one of my favourite big finished series of all time, Jago and Life. Um, Love the Soldier, Below the Devil, Spirit Trap, uh, Similarity Engine. Or is it the Similarity? Yes, it's the Similarity Engine. Lightfoot and Saunders, The Necropolis Express, Theatre of Dreams, The Rift of Inheritance, Rest in Peace David Collins, by the way, um, Dead Man's Tales, uh, Man at the End of the Garden, Swan Song, Chronoplasm, uh, Jago in Love, th uh, Beautiful Things, uh, the Lonely, the Lonely Clock, and the Hourglass Killers. I uh, yeah, uh, the Hourglass Killers. I don't have my glasses on. Now you've got Voyage to Venus. You know, great story. Voyage to the New World. I prefer Voyage to Venus, but yeah, it's great. Uh, so then we've got Series Five and Series Six. Uh, the Age of Revolution. Oh, it's great. You know, Jake and Life in the 60s is a good concept. Case of the Gluttons Guru, I do love that as well. Oh, also, this one has, like, someone that was in Horrible Histories in it. And I'm like, oh my god, Horrible Histories! Um, so, um, then we've also got the Bloodchild Codex. Oh, it's probably my favourite one of the season. Then the final act. Holy shit. This is a finale. This box set is probably one of the best Jake and Lightfoot boxes I've ever listened to. But Series 6 is also very good. Uh, the Skeleton Quay. No. Good introduction to the season. The Turn of the Pressed. Ah, uh, what? I don't want a Freud episode. <laughs> but it was a good episode. And Freud was a good character in it. Military Intelligence. And then a bombastic finale. The Trial of George Lightfoot. Ooh. This, this is... Ooh, yeah, and there's also Jago and Whitefoot and Strax, but I've not listened to that yet. So, excuse, excuse, hello, excuse me, can you, can, <sighs> right, so, then there's Torchwood, um, Conspiracy, Moving Target, I can't remember if I've spoken about that one, it's pretty good, I do love Susie as a character, Broken, I've already spoken a lot about this one, and I love it. Made you look. It's a good Gwen episode. I do like it. It it does wonder to the audio format. And as I say, Guy Adams, great writer. Um, Cascade is an episode. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I love you, but like, it's not that amazing. I wish I loved it though, because Tosh. Tortured Archive. This is a good anniversary story. You know. Part of me wanted more, but like it does the job that it's out to do. I only wish Owen was in it. Um, uh, then you've got um, Tortured Outbreak, uh, Part One, uh, Part Two. I can't remember what I'm saying by names. And Part Three. It's 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 a it's a it's just three. It just feels like you know full cast Torchwood, but it's just. I think I think it just. You know, it's, it's twice as long as it feels like it should be, you know. And then we've got, um, Aliens Among Us. So, changes everything. Good introduction to the season. Um, Aliens and Sex and Chips and Gravy. The episode where I realised I loved, 
um, Colchester. Or, nice introduction, probably the weakest of the season, but only because it, it acts as an introduction and it does what it needs to, so. Um, su superiority complex. Oh, I do like it. Um, uh, love rat. Ooh. Ooh. An STD that makes you want to fuck people to death. That's, that's interesting. It's alien STDs. I'm surprised Torchwood hasn't done that yet. Or didn't do it in the TV show. A kill to a view. An amazing pun. Oh, Billis is so great. And seeing him with the new cast is great as well. Zero hour. Ooh. Like, I think... I, th I honestly feel like Tyler is the new Owen in terms of episodes for this season. Uh, the Empty Hand. It, it just, it, it redefines Andy, I think. And then you've got uh, Poker Face. Uh, tagged. Yvonne Hartman versus the internet. Escape Room, which is literally an escape room. But deadly and torchwood, and I love it. Uh, and then you've got Harold of the. Um, it's basically set up for the next season, and I think that one might actually be the weakest one. It just feels like it's just there to be a cliffhanger, just one big cliffhanger. So then you've got. Um, oh, why did they make it smaller? Hold on, I need my glasses. Future pain. Ah. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. It's great. It's a great, you know, season. Um, the man who destroyed Torchwood. A right-wing conspiracy theorist online attacking those like basement dweller people. It's funny. Um, it's, it is a nice satire. Um, see no evil. Ooh, it, this feels like it gives me tortured outbreak vibes, but this is actually good. Um. Uh, Nightwatch is the... it feels like the same episode again. <laughs> uh, Flight 405. Ooh, this box that has a good arc for uh, Norton. Hostile environment. Oh my god, it's like one of the most depressing, if not the most depressing, the audio. Just be prepared for it. Uh, another man's shoes. It's it's a body swap episode. You need a bit of light-hearted entertainment after this. Like Tyler becomes homeless, and the and the homeless people in Cardiff is it's a dangerous thing to be. Uh, and then Eye of the Storm basically sets up the final box set and how the final box set is like high stakes because everything's gone terribly. So you've got A Mother's Son, written by Alexandra Riley, who plays Eng, and you know what, it's a good episode, and to be honest, it's a nice change of pace at this point in the series. Uh, it's great, Jane. It's a nice attack on urban myths for tourism. Uh, Day Zero. What was this one about again? Ah, yes! Water supply in Cardiff's gone terrible. It just feels like what Outbreak should have been. Like, again. And then... Thoughts and prayers. Uh, and it brings this whole, like, 24-episode arc to a conclusion. But it does set up a potential 7th Tortured series as well. It's great! You know, and then we've got Die River Song Series Five. I've already talked about. It. I think that Bell Test, uh, Animal Instinct, uh, Lifeboat and the Death Boat, and then Concealed Weapon. And then we've got the best big finish series ever, The War Master. Um, so you've got uh, Beneath the Viscoid, uh, Good Master, um, Skyman, and the heavenly paradigm and then you've got 
after only the monstrous, the master of Kalos, with Call for the Dead, Glittering Prize, Persistence of Dreams, and Sins of the Father. Oh, it's, it's, I, I love, I, I, th I think this box set's underrated, actually. People don't like it for some reason. But then, you've got Rage of the Time Lords, um, with the Survivor, Coney Island Chameleon, um, Missing Link, and Darkness and Light. That's just like, it's surprising, Paul McGann is in it for two episodes. Which, it's... Scott Hancock, you've, you've done good. I love you. <laughs> and then you've got the Antigenesis. Oh, this is an epic. And it's just like... The first episode is already one of the craziest things. Like, like From the Flames is one of the craziest things I've listened to in Big Finish. It only gets crazier. Like, the Master's Dalek plan is great. Shockwave just is the most insane Big Finish audio I've ever listened to, and then He Who Wins, oh, it's a beautiful conclusion, and it's just like, Derek Jacoby's great in it, Mark Gatiss is great in it as the alternate universe master, and like, uh, and then Sean Carlson is Narvin, it's just, it's just like a practically perfect box set, like, would I give it a 10 out of 10? I get on the whole, probably not. But it's a possibility, at least. So you've got music from the audio adventures, Fifth Doctor, Sixth Doctor, Exless, I need to get the Exless audios. And then we've got uh, some BBC Missing Episode soundtracks, The Massacre, which I love. It's a great, pure historical. The Celestial Soymaker, which is underrated, although a bit problematic, admittedly. So then we've got Pest Control. I like it. I like it. It's... You know, I feel like it should have been only one episode. Dead Air was only one disc long, though, and it's amazing, and it's probably my favourite Tenth Doctor audio. Um, thank you, James Goss, again. <laughs> uh, Ring of Steel, also very good. But I've not listened to the other ones, so just The Runaway Train, Jade Pyramid, um, Hounds of Artemis, and... Oh, uh, Blackout. And then we've got Hornet's Nest, which I have done a review of on the Universals. So we've got uh, Stuff of Nightmares, uh, The Dead Shoes, uh, Circus of Doom, uh, Sting in the Tail, and Hive of Horror. Um, yeah. Venues of the Stones, probably will sell it at some point, though. And then we've got some Torch BBC audios, Hidden, uh, and Everyone Says Hello by Dan Abner. Hmm, interesting. Doctor A Legend Reborn. Yeah. Uh, a Carrie Blyton soundtrack CD. No. Uh, Truck On. Yeah, it's a collection of Doctor Who inspired songs. I've not listened to it yet. Uh, Big Finish Talks Back, the audio companions. It's a nice interview with like India Fisher, um, Lee Spam, and Maggie Stables. And then Big Finish Talks Back, the Eight Doctor Authors. This is a nice insight to the 2002 Eight Doctor audios, and I do like it. I do actually have uh, Big Finish Talks Back, an interview with Paul McGann, but yeah. And then finally, uh, this is just the last bit, so before I do the limited edition my book things, we've got Benjamin and Baxter, interview with um, Jay Gould and for themselves. It's, you know, it's great, and hearing Trevor Baxter's stuff was inherently more interesting because of, uh, he was projecting about how it was hard for him as a gay man. Uh, as an actor back when he was an actor, so yeah. John Barrowman's Christmas album. We're getting into like some miscellaneous stuff here. Uh, Smash Bros. soundtrack CD. Uh, I'll probably re reorganize this so this goes somewhere else. <laughs> um, and then we've got Big Finish's like seven stuff Warship. Uh, it is the in-between all of Series 2 and Series 3, or C Series B and Series C, sorry. Um, Drones by Mark Platt. Um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting audio, I would say. 
Uh, Cold Fury. Ooh, now that one was good. That one was one I just listened to like the other day on a walk. Um, and then you've got Scimitar. Um, I've not listened to this season. Uh, Fortuitous. Ghost Ship. Devil's Advocate. Um, and Truth and Lies. There's one more that I don't have because it's out of print. Uh, hopefully I'll get every Blake 7 audio as well as, you know, I'm still trying to do Doctor Who as well. And then you've got Love Songs for the Shy and Cynical, which includes six stories and also an interview with Robert Sherman. Well, it's not my interview, though. That's for sure. Check out my interview. And then there's Big Finish's adaptation of Frankenstein. I've got the special edition here, and it has limited edition art cards, uh, signed by Nicholas Briggs and Arthur Darvel. And it's great! It's a great adaptation, and I love it. And this has been my Big Finish collection. Now on to the special edition releases. Some of the boxes, um, for, uh, all the things. You can pause and see which ones are for which thing, and then I'll get on to these, uh, just now. So here's my limited edition book things. We've got the Light at the End, uh, special edition. I've got 554 out of 1000. Uh, it's nice to own this, I do like owning this, and also I've not listened to the behind the scenes featurette yet, and I've also not listened to the Companion Chronicle Revenants with it. Uh, you've got The World of Doctor Who, uh, Mind Games, Recent Your Process, The Green Skull and Second Sight, I might have talked about them before. Last Adventure I've talked about before as well, I believe. Um, I've got 3670 out of 10,000 and 4721 out of 10,000 here. I've got The Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 1, this was a nice find, Technophobia, Time Reaver and Death of the Queen, all good story. Uh, 1827 out of 5000, I got it second hand. That's Doctor Adventures Volume 2, you've got Rose in there as well, Infamy of the Zaros, Sword of the Chevalier, and uh, Cold Vengeance. 4897 out of 5000, I'm surprised it's not sold out yet, but you know, I, I like all three of those stories. And then you've also got the Tenth Doctor Adventures um, Volume 3, with No Place, One Mile Down, and Creeping Death. No Place is a great ghost story, One Mile Down is a great Dune story, and The Creeping Death is a great historical and I love it. And then you've also got the Legacy of Time, which I've done a review of, so I'm not going to mention that. And that's 1528 of 4,000. And also, uh, I forgot to say, 1617 of 5,000. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you in the next one, maybe. Like, next year. If, uh, you know, if uh, we're all alive by then. See ya.